The Titanic fight between the living and the undead has been written many times with different interpretations. Hardcore tells the story of this fight for survival between two distinct groups against zombies and against each other. It presents itself as a side-scroller shooter with depth, which means it is possible to move away from the screen and consequently get closer, which helps to give a little more dynamism to the papercraft looking characters. There is not much depth in terms of the story and, well, the main objective is to survive. However, there are two distinct endings. Without wanting to unravel too much, both storylines follow a different group of survivors that converge at a certain point. Of course, each one has different individualities. The whole story is told in a fun way, both by lines of text before each mission and in a very peculiar way between missions with comic stripes that help the player to adapt to everything that it happens around them. The player has the possibility to choose several types of missions through a map with distinct points that ultimately converge on the main mission points. The mission types break down into distinct main objectives, such as main mission, treasure hunt, scavenging, ambush, extermination and tournament. The last one introduced a new aspect, the card game. It was a point that personally surprised me a lot. Although with simple mechanics, it tickles the taste of who likes to collect cards, allowing the player to build his own game deck. Unfortunately, it is only possible to play this mode if there is the possibility to choose this specific type of mission. Pity, since it's quite fun, but as the devs themselves say, there is not much depth in this aspect. Maybe in the future there will be a hardcore card title or even an expansion to this title that introduce this possibility to players. In addition to this, there are survival mechanics, such as water and food. In this sense, it is important to collect all the items left behind after defeating each enemy or exploring the map in specific points, such as a car doors or suitcases. Undoubtedly, wood is by far the most scarce element and, by the way, the most important, since without it there is no fire for cooking. And finally, to craft new equipment. Each element of the group is assigned a class. In this way, it is only allowed to equip a specific type of weapon to the survivor. Each survivor brings with them a special ability, and of course, specific to each class. There is also the possibility to upgrade this skill with a skill modifier. Although I only found three different types of this modifier, it introduced the premise of new animation for the skill and consequent type of attack. For example, the engineer who places a minigun on the ground has a possibility to use the Pyromancer modifier, which changes the attack type to fire, or changes the minigun to a drone that follows him until it self-destructs after some time. The player has a control over each survivor ability during the mission, so the survivors attack alone leaving the special abilities up to the player. The inventory is limited, so it is important to recycle equipment that is not needed. This is an important procedure as the destroyed materials allows the craft of new and better equipment. Regarding to the skill tree, it allows the player to choose a range of options that unfolds between three main branches, courage, leadership and survival. And for animal lovers, the courage branch allows adopting a furry friend. The group of survivors can have up to seven different elements. During story mode, they are automatically assigned to the group without much choice on the part of the player. However, in post-campaign, it is possible to continue the adventure in Wastelands mode, which essentially is a roguelike mode. New missions, the opportunity to collect better equipment, and the prospect of finding and recruiting new survivors. In terms of gameplay, it is quite fluid and intuitive. There might be some confusion at first when it comes to enemy positioning and where you are shooting. However, the enemy in the line of attack is highlighted in red. As the adventure progresses, it becomes quite intuitive as the notion of proximity and aim at the enemy is developed. Finally, there is a multiplayer mode. Although with some problems in terms of online connectivity, it can become an interesting mode to be played with friends on the couch. It's a small title and even though that it's not a hardcore title, it has some replayability. Even if the player only wants to know the other ending, 